good morning! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel, that is the R and the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And this is my week 27 wrap up. I enjoyed having a long weekend, that's a short work week, and it meant I got more reading and writing done, so let's go into this. I finished Persuasion by Jane Austen this week. So that is the first book of my Jane Austen TBR done. And it's the first time I've read Persuasion. So the setup of this is Anne Elliot, the heroine in this one, when she was 19, fell in love with Frederick Wentworth, who was a lieutenant in the Navy. They wanted to get married, but her dad didn't think very highly of the match. Her like surrogate mother, because her mother is dead, suggested that she wait because he didn't have really a lot of money and he's in a dangerous profession so who knows if he's gonna come back and she allowed herself to be persuaded by safety as she explains later and so then eight and a half years later they end up meeting up again and circumstances have changed for both of them it's now captain frederick wentworth and he has made his fortune and Anne Elliot's father and sister were our big spendthrifts, and so they have now they now have to let or rent their family home and go live somewhere else. And at this point, it is supposed to go live with them in Bath, but her younger sister asks her to wait and to stay a little bit of time with her. And her younger sister lives in the neighborhood, so she goes and stays with her younger sister as the small world of, you know, books and novels are the couple that rents her ancestral home, Kel Lynch, is the sister of Frederick Wentworth. So, of course, he's going to come to the neighborhood to see them, and they end up meeting again. And he is still pissed at her for listening to the family friend and not marrying him, or not at least keeping up with the engagement. Anne is a very interesting heroine. She is practical and she is a realist. Looking at her alongside Lizzie Bennet, Lizzie Bennet's very practical as well and she's also a realist. Just Lizzie Bennet is a, in a little bit higher society standing so there's a little bit more that she can get away with and it comes from a different family background. In Anne's family, Anne is always looked at as the spare, the extra, and nobody really wants her even though the, the man who married her younger sister actually wanted to marry her first. So the men in her life find her the better personality. And she's the type of person she only speaks when she wants to. Her family has taught her that when she speaks, no one's really gonna listen. So you get to really see her shine when she is with her sisters, her younger sister's family. And they've, they've really like taken her in as another daughter. And in fact, I think Louise even mentions to Captain Wentworth, oh, we would have preferred Charles to have married Anne. We like her better than Mary. That's where Wentworth finds out, oh, someone else did propose and she turned them down. And so this book just kind of goes through her life of as they are getting reacquainted again. Austin did some very interesting stylistic writing with this one. Like Anne Elliot is almost like... I would say all-knowing. From a glance she knows what someone or she knows that oh he still has feelings for me. Really? Just from a glance? There were a couple occasions where one character said something which they would not have had the knowledge of and so it was a little weird but overall I kind of I liked how it came back to be and then how Wentworth and Anne ended up actually talking again. Definitely some conveniences were needed to make the plot work. The reconciliation at the end is worth it, and that's not spoiling it. Everyone who reads Jane Austen knows that the couple gets together, and it was nice to read a different type of heroine. I had heard a lot that Anne Elliot was a quieter her heroine, so not to expect another Lizzie Bennet, which is good to be warned of if you're picking this up. Because yes, she's a different personality, it's a different situation. Anne is definitely stubborn and going to go her own way. 
reading this makes me more excited to read the other Jane Austen on my shelf that I have not read yet. And then the other book that I read a lot of this week is August Kitco and the Mechas from Space. I didn't quite finish it before the end of the week, but I am really, really enjoying it. I learned more about why the vanguards are killing humans or harvesting them. So I don't know if this is a standalone book or if this is going to end up being a series, but the way that plot point was introduced, it could be more books later, but we could still have a satisfying conclusion to this book. I am excited. It's, tw you know, I think I'm three chapters away. I am really, really enjoying this book. And so I'll talk more about it after I'm done. And then you guys know my mood reading this. Did I pick up anything else that I have been reading la the week before? No, no, I didn't. Instead, what I started was Jane Austen at Home by Lucy Worsley. And this is a look at the homes that Jane Austen lived in. Right now, it's still talking a lot about Steventon, but I think it's about to go into the uh, boarding homes or the the girls' homes that she lived in for schooling here shortly. I don't know a lot about Jane Austen's life, so this has really been good to see how did a Georgian home operate, especially a parsonage. And you kind of see like the differences in society and class. I think one of the most fascinating things I'm taking away from this is the concept of family and how family can extend to extended family and cousins. If you're writing contemporary, I think you are going to write mostly kind of what you know. And while Jane Austen today for us is historical, when she was writing, it was contemporary. And because this is a nonfiction and I read nonfiction slowly, I don't foresee myself finishing it this month, but I'll probably just pick it up and keep reading slowly throughout the month. And then I finally picked up Valentina Salazar is not a monster hunter. Only a few chapters into this one, this is a middle grade about a family who are monster protectors. Not as says, you know, they're not monster hunters here in the title, and then the first chapter is explained. They are monster protectors, or were until something happened and dad now is gone. So mom has settled them permanently, and it's totally shifted the dynamic the and it's totally shifted the dynamics of the family. And Valentina, the younger, one, the youngest one, is not happy. And nobody wants to engage with her on this topic. Especially as she points out, hey, since living here, we're actually breaking apart. We're not coming together as a family. Again, I'm only a few chapters in, but I'm really digging this voice. I think I forgot to say this is written by Zoraida Cordova. So for my writing wrap up, it's actually been really good this week. This week has been Camp Nano, and my goal is to write 500 words a day. I, I have not been getting exactly 500 each day, but it's averaging out to that. And my best writing day was the 4th of July, which for Americans is a holiday, but my husband and I don't celebrate holidays, so it was, yeah, it was a paid holiday for me where I just got to spend more time writing, and it's been really great. So I'm excited that I am on par with my goal. This weekend, I know that there is a writing event going on again, so I will try to get at least one of those streams in so I can get my word count and keep it. And I'm mostly working on my writing excuses homework, but I did write a little bit in one of my story concepts. Story that has multiple characters, not an ensemble, but they're all in the same city dealing with the repercussions of a rebellion or revolution, depending on what side you're on, how you want to say things. Or so there it's there like after a couple months after this has happened and I have one character who is going through some trauma and I'm having a little bit of trouble writing their perspective. And it's a little more slow going because this character's uh, perspective is going to be jumping in and out of the past. It's like yeah, it's gonna be jumping from the past to the present. 
because they don't realize that they're living out of order at the moment and then everyone else's timeline is just going to be dealing with the present and so I'm really working on how to make sure that the one character who will be back and forth isn't going to be too jarring to the rest of the story but again I have to write it to see does this actually work or not that's really what it has to be and for other media it's always a balance when you are doing writing and reading of how much TV or other shows are you watching I did continue with a series that my parents recommended to me and that is death in paradise I had read the or not read I had watched the first seasons it's a detective show set set in San Marie in the Caribbean I've watched the first seasons where I've got um, I've gone through the first two detectives and I had started a little bit of the third detective so now I've picked up and I'm continuing with them from the thumbnails I think there might be a fourth detective so that has been my week 27 how was yours have you read anything good have you read any good new releases this year that you think I should prioritize for new release-a-thon next month. I would love to hear down below. Thank you and have a great day.